tonight on Panorama. We delve into the world of the Catholic Church and the people's ongoing search for answers. As the faithful look to their leaders for guidance, the Church finds itself at a crossroads grappling with issues of faith, tradition and modernity. Join Robert Baratheon on tonight's program as we explore the crisis facing one of the world's largest religious institutions and the future of the Catholic faith. Catholicism's new home is the Vatican City State, which was officially established as a sovereign entity in 1929 through the Lateran Treaty, signed by the Holy See and the Kingdom of Italy. Prior to that, the area now known as Vatican City served as the papal residence and administrative center of the church for centuries. It was back in the day when you can get away with something like that. Dark. How about Dark. that journalist who infiltrated the Vatican? You remember that? What? With roots dating back to the time of Christ, the church has played a significant role in shaping the course of history and influencing the beliefs of billions of people around the globe. From accusations of sexual abuse and corruption to debates over the doctrine and the role of women in the church, these are complex and controversial questions that are dividing communities and challenging the very foundation of the church. Hi, I'm Robert Baratheon from the BBC, and today we are doing a panorama special documentary on the Vatican and paedophilia in the Catholic Church. Now, so far we have tried to find some access into the church to speak to the Pope, and we've been declined by most of his associates. Um, so we've been denied chamber access to the Pope. Um, some of the causes I wanted to bring up with the Pope was that why did he receive $132 billion from Jeffrey Epstein before his death? Now, the answer is, there is an ancient passageway between two buildings here, from the Vatican to another building, which they used to use to import children from Italy into the Vatican. However, now, they are trying to create a new passageway, an Elon Musk-style hyperloop, straight from right here in the Vatican, all the way to Epstein Island. There's been other kind of paedophilic news going around within the past year or so in the Vatican. Uh, we've had such reports as Bill Gates has officially bought a hotel just not far from the Vatican. Now you ask yourself, why would a multi-billionaire need another hotel? Is access to children. The Catholic Church is known for storing children away in underground cellars and distributing them to the rich and the wealthy. But today we're going to inquire to why this is still happening in 2022. I'm Robert Baratheon, and this is a BBC Panorama Special. Hello, sir. So, how, um, uh, how do we see the Pope here? The Pope, eh? Yes, I'm with the BBC. I've got an interview ready for the Pope today. You? With the BBC, yes. I don't know. Eh? So, I want to see the Pope. The Pope is uh, on the Sunday, yeah? Eh? He's speaking the window for the... So, so, I can't see the Pope today? No. Is this like a denial of the allegations? Like, so I have to come back Sunday to Sunday, see the Pope? Sunday, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, you, you have a reporter. Yes. But you take the permis, uh, permission. You, you. Yeah, I emailed in and I said I wanted to see the Pope. Isn't, ah, okay. okay. I have As our camera crew tried to document the events unfolding, a Vatican agent attempted to impede our progress. However, our team remained steadfast in the pursuit of truth, determined to shed light on this troubling situation. Such interference only serves to underscore the importance of our work in uncovering the facts and exposing the truth. I haven't received any response, but I've been told that I'm going to see the Pope today. Um, we just wanted to discuss some things, but... Okay, so it had to be Sunday to see... Sunday, yeah. yeah, all in the Sunday, you look here. Yeah. For the mess, eh? you look, eh? yes. you speak there, eh? okay. and uh, you walk around the, the square. No film? No, no. I'm, I am uh, with the BBC. Um, reporter? Uh, journalist? Journalismo? Journalismo. Journalismo? No, no, no. Me. Okay, that's fine. Private. We'll, we'll, we'll take uh, the, the silence as a guilty.
In 1300s China, the new one-child policy came into play. So one way to combat the two-child deficit was to actually put children on slave ships just to bring over to the West for the Vatican and all the other priests in the Western world and the European Catholic Church to use as sex slaves. So the Chinese were a big part in the sex slave industry in the 1300s. Um, they were pretty closely knit with the Pope. Um, it's something which you don't really hear about, or you don't really expect, but these are some of the vessels uh, used to transport the children over during that kind of era. Um, it's said to believe that the Han Dynasty were actually the first to um, export children into slaves. But yeah, this is how we have it. In the 1500s, the British were in partnership with the Italian Federazzi and they were creating some ships specifically designed for bringing children from Africa into the Vatican. Now, this is one of the original models. This is called the Marchisio 4.8, which is one of the original boats which they used to bring the children in. The Marchisio is known as the serpent, as you can see by the decile on the boat. It is actually quite got a, a, a style. If you bring the camera over here, sir, you'll see the style of the boat as well, and the, and the vinyl is like a serpent. So the Marchisio 4.0 is uh, one of the original bringers of slaves to the Vatican, or mainly children. They could fit so many children in the holes and they had no idea how to get out because they were too tall to reach the ladder. See, it's actually quite false in North America currently. Most Italian men circumcise their penis, where in the ancient Roman days, penises were not actually circumcised. They were just kind of left to be. Um, it's kind of something that was kind of adapted in Italian culture. Um, I mean, they claim to have a lot of culture, but apart from circumcising themselves now, they don't really have a lot going on. So something which is not normally mentioned in Italian culture is how the Italians also forced the Egyptians into their way once they conquered them in 1608. Um, as you can see here, we have a Sphinx, which is now under Italian control. Um, this is actually found in one of the tombs, the Isis tombs in the Pyramid of Giza. Um, and again, it shows an Italian man called Roberto and he, he's surrounded by children. It just shows that even before Catholicism, that the Catholic Church was not actually the founder of paedophilia in Italy. It was way before then in ancient Rome. So if we come forward here, we can see more Egyptian history has been kind of indulged into it. We have a prosciutto's crocodile here and um, the Italian man surrounded by children, which is something I find we need to get to the bottom too. Why is this happening here? Why is, why is paedophilia allowed to be embraced in Italy? I feel like this is more than just the Vatican. I feel like this is a cultural thing amongst Italians and we need to address this. I really just don't get these blokes. Like, how does the leaf just stay there? It's a fucking lie, man. It must be like a bit of like leather cloth that just wraps around his dick, around the shaft and or is it just fucking stupid standing there? This, this is Italians. This is what it's, this is what Italy is. For stupid people. Now this is in fact one of the most sadder stories in ancient Roman history. A mother, her name was Sadatori, and her son were repelling the ancient men of the days where they used to come and pillage the village. So Venetian men would come in, steal the children, and one mother stood up and fought. As you can see by the answer, they cut her arm off, and they cut her kid's arm off, and molested him. Now, not everybody was pro-paedophilia in the Catholic Church during these times. Some men would actually rebel against the Pope's orders, and then there was a course of action where they would make you, as a punishment, slice off your arms, your legs, and your head. And it was called torsoism back in the ancient times. As you can see, he has no head. Obviously, they left it up to the kneecaps because it's more difficult to balance on the kneecaps. It's harder to make stubs. And his arms and head are fully gone. I mean, he was dead once they took his head, but like, it was, this is just what the punishment was for rebelling against paedophilia in ancient times. This is the 16th chapel. The predecessor, the 15th chapel, was uh, not as big as this one. Quite a lot of uh, naked children on the walls again, but you know, we'll look past that. It's kind of artistic. Yeah, lads, this is a Banksy special. Made by Banksy. Yeah, actually, the original was based in Shoreditch, and then he uh, they brought it over to the Vatican. They gave Banksy five kids for this piece of art. This is the guy we're after. This is the one. 
this is my bane, the bane of my existence. I'm Batman, he's the Joker. I'm Spider-Man, he's Venom. I'm Ian Huntley, I'm the Manchester Police Force. Wait, no, he's Ian Huntley. I'm the Manchester Police Force. Got that one. This is the Sala de Costandino. They're trying to, they tried to pin this one on me. 30 kids from Thailand in the back of a lorry, it weren't mine, nothing to do with it. But this is the art piece which we see today. And if you see right at the top there on the ceiling, you can see uh, an example of somebody who's been torsoed. They've literally just been torsoed. So this is what we call casual torsoism. The body is just completely rendered apart from each other. With the Catholic cross, and sorry for my Parkinson's degrees hands. It's very hard to hold a camera in when you're uh, surrounded by paedophiles. But you know, check this guy out. And kids must have fucking tired him right out, innit? Jesus Christ. I'm here with a famous piece, Aldolfo Witt. It looks a little bit little like uh, little Nas. However, it's actually Hitler's dad. You see by the face. Someone gets a black marker. <laughs> Edit that in, and it will be lovely. So this little room here, they turn it into like a holographic experience of the Vatican. But really, that's just an old trap door they used to do to put the kids in. Where were you the day little Timmy was murdered, mate? I was fucking sexually assaulted by your mate, Pope Benedict III. Right, we're at the Chapelle de Cecilia, or as I like to call it, the Beano Mag. He's just overwhelmed with like little Dennis the Menace comics everywhere. I'm running out of energy. I'm not hungry yet, but I'm tired. But this Beano makes keeping me going. Don't tell me what to do. Not It's like asking me to. We just had a uh, tannoy say no filming or no uh, no noise, it said silence. And no one's listening. Welcome to 2022, mate. Sorry. You cannot do photos or videos. Oh, okay. Thank you. What, what's the reason? Because it's a holy place. Oh, holy place, okay. It's like Mecca, isn't it? Summon a wild Jimmy. <laughs> and uh, there you can see um, the enormity of uh, what appears to be a uh, secondary explosion. Whether that was, uh, uh, it could well be the first explosion because it may have been a fire just before it, but uh, it, uh, I'm just getting reports actually that there was a fire first and then- Isn't it grand to be here listening to the story of Jimmy, the Irish hero who put a stop to the Vatican's plans for world domination. Jimmy was a fierce and determined lad with the heart of a lion and the spirit of a true Irishman. Through his bravery and determination, Jimmy was able to uncover the Vatican's sinister plot and put an end to it before it could come to pass. Blessed by the burnt toast, he succeeded where others would have surely failed. Jimmy's actions serve as a reminder to us all to be ever vigilant in the face of injustice, to stand up for what's right and to work towards making the world a better place for all. So, let us raise a point to the courage and spirit of Jimmy and may his legacy continue to inspire us for generations to come. Robert Baratheon's ships arrive in port tomorrow. Diplomacy has failed us. 
and our men cannot hold the gates. Our men shall hold the gates, they have no chance. We shall fight to the bitter end tomorrow.